The following is a presentation of First Fandom Experience, a collaborative publishing project that brings to life the history and impact of science fiction fandom. This video features content from The Earliest Bradbury, Ray Bradbury's earliest writings as a science fiction fan, presented in honor of the centennial of his birth by First Fandom Experience. The advertisements that appeared in early science fiction pulp magazines were notably incongruous with the content. Heal your rupture, learn to mount birds, join the Secret Service. Ray Bradbury penned a three-page rant on the subject, which appeared in the spring 1940 issue of Sweetness and Light, an edgy satirical fanzine produced by a faction of the Los Angeles Science Fiction League known as the Moonrakers. Chambers' 20th Century Dictionary of the English Language defines a moonraker as a silly person and moonraking as the following of crazy fancies. The group included Bradbury comrades T. Bruce Yerke and Henry Kuttner, a fan who had established a professional career as an author. The publication ran for five issues from spring 1939 to spring 1940. Some additional context will be helpful to understand the author's references. Bradbury recalls reading a story in Astounding Science Fiction, a leading pulp magazine of the period, edited by John W. Campbell, Jr. The tale is called Grey Lensman and is part of an epic space opera series by Edward Elmer Smith, Ph.D., commonly referred to as Doc Smith. Kimball Kinnison is the altruistic hero of this episode. Bradbury refers to Virgil Finley, the most popular and prominent illustrator of pulp magazines in the late 1930s. Bradbury also mentions Forrest J. Ackerman, the leader of his local band of active science fiction fans in Los Angeles. When Bradbury writes, John W. Campbell announces a new nova, he's referring to a special designation the editor created in December 1938 for stories appearing in Astounding that he considered especially significant because they offered an unusual manner of presentation. Are you ad conditioned? By Ray Bradbury. Not long ago, the staff of Sweetness and Light received a humorous article that was a genuine find, one of the funniest scripts, we thought, that had yet been written. We howled mirthfully, and we still think the script one of the most amusing yarns we've ever read. This, however, isn't it. I am perplexed. I am also nonplussed and slightly vexed. I am disconcerted with all pulp magazines. I have come to the conclusion that I hate a potpourri of science fiction and 90-pound weaklings, asthma, cough drops, lumbago, and Carter's little liver pills. It has become so that I find myself, quite strangely, even hating myself, which is a deplorable state of affairs. Why am I nonplussed, vexed? I am growing into a state of nauseated rigor mortis from reading thrilling wonder stories, science fiction, and the rest. Because... Because, well, let me give you the whole grisly story in an atomic nutshell. Last night, about twelve, I was perusing a battered, gnawed-upon copy of Astounding. In the middle of one particular story, where Kimball Kinnison, the gray lensman, is feeling under the weather, the doctors are standing around wondering whether he is going to kick the bucket or lie around and stink up the hospital for another week. The suspense is awful. In trips a damsel, crying plaintively, Kimball, my sweet, are you hurt badly? Are you going to wilt? And she goes off and sobs in a corner. Naturally, I was on needles and pins. Yeah, I asked myself, what in God's name is Blinko with Kimby? Didn't he drink his Welch's last night? So there I was at the end of the page and just ready to turn it over with that one question in mind. What's wrong with you, Kimball Kinnison? I turned the page quickly. Bam! There, in huge black letters, is my answer. The one word ruptured? An advertisement. What a stroke of genius that ad was. What an answer to a burning question. Ruptured? Send the coupon below and receive... What? A withered facsimile of Kinnison? A free rupture? Everyone should have a little one in the home. I couldn't go on with the story after that. God. My stomach writhed at the thought of my hero being... being... well, you know what. What an ignominious end for such a fine fellow. And further down the page, another ad reared its morbid head. Want to raise giant frogs? 
I sat for a long while and thought it over from a highly scientific angle. A blank expression appeared on my face. I couldn't make up my mind. In the first place, I asked myself, were frogs decent people? Would they mind the baby for me, or were they inclined to drink whiskey and go around the house belching at inopportune moments? No, I finally decided. I guess I didn't want any giant Kimball Kinnisons around the house. And anyway, whoever thought up ads in mags? Can we blame these nauseating blemishes on what Hank Kuttner calls valiety? Valiety is enough to cause trouble in any house. Trying to spell it is a damned nuisance. Where was I? Well, Kimball Kinnison didn't have a baby. There was a miscarriage somewhere between the ad on Doc Savage and E.E. E. Smith. And Smith, a doctor, too. Shame. Kimball didn't have a baby because he read another ad in the mag and is now much wiser. He is now, thanks to a third ad, living in a catacomb and nurturing colossal mushrooms, from which he extracts vitamin 34 and a quarter minus A, which, given to amoebas, prevents vomiting. So I say, on with science fiction, on with advertising. On with more stories like the one by Emery Smirch entitled Mouths and Nostrils Open and Shut. The ads in that story were really superb. John W. Campbell announces another Nova. The ads in the next issue of Astounding will be written by E.E. E. Smith and drawn by Finley. <laughs> Bravo! Camel Cigarettes will write the lead story about an Earthman who catches Venerians and annihilates them by tapping them with a camel, giving them all humps. Damned monotonous, ain't it? In Thrilling Wonder, we are thrilled to a frenzy by a novelty company's ad presenting a new razor cushion, which you place on chairs. Unsuspecting guests sit down and are treated to much embarrassment when the cushion gives forth a startling sound which DeCamp chooses to call a voiceless labiolingual roll. False teeth offered on a 90-day free trial are sensational news on page 100. Send no money, a mortgage on your rocket ship will suffice. Flush poison from kidneys, stop getting up nights. We wonder if this is a subtle ad for vampires. Do you have a gallbladder? Try the new 1940 model with Torvik tubing. Nervous? Weak ankles? Swollen calves? Yes, we went to a show the other night and sat on the aisle. We haven't checked thoroughly, but roughly, counting heads, we figure that the entire population of Los Angeles passed down our row in a three-hour period. Further down, we read, Join the Science Fiction League of... Continued on next page. Asthma. Forrest J. Ackerman wins... Continued on next page. A pair of undies and brassiere to match for only 49 cents. Get big husky muscles. One year from today, what will you be doing? Paper cutouts in the state asylum, if this goes on. Are you air conditioned? Now that is silly. Want to write stories? Sure, but let the authors who write some of this bull take the course first. Large income with Swedish massage. <laughs> yeah, we know. That's why Joe Stalin has been playing around with Scandinavia lately. Look what Adolf got with a Polish shampoo. Now I understand those bald-headed ads in magazines. The first picture is one of a fan with hair. The second is the same fan after trying to read science fiction and ads simultaneously. All those interested in hating science fiction from this day forward should send their contributions in the form of time bombs to the staff of this magazine. Again, I say, what science fiction needs is Virgil Finley painting the fistula and pimple ads. Bravo! Or am I repeating myself? Isn't fistula, or science fiction, just swell? I mean, really. Please visit firstfandomexperience.org to learn more about our project and to order your copy of The Earliest Bradbury.